Does the book by the world's most famous hacker live up to the legend? I'm Scott Schober, and this is your two-minute cybersecurity briefing book edition. Ghost in the Wires by Kevin Mitnick is a must read for anyone who loves technology and computers. I was thrilled to see that Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, wrote the forward as he's a true innovator and a hero of mine. Kevin's story includes many details from his early exploits, including phone hacking, dumpster diving, and clever social engineering tricks as he cons his way into corporations back into the 1980s. There have been many stories and rumors about the antics of Kevin Mitnick over the years and many that are grossly exaggerated, so it's great to hear those stories in his own words as well as from his co-writer, William Simon. I deal with technology every day here at my company by analyzing and educating others on how to stay safe from cyber breaches and ID theft. I found Kevin's stories only reinforce the importance of not trusting the weakest element of security, people. And that's a good thing because I cannot overstate how vital people are to the security of any system. They will always be the weakest security link, so it's always good to get that message from any book, especially one so entertaining and popular as Ghost in the Wire. As I read the book, I reminisced about my days as a hacker, as a kid. Kevin's recall of obscure microprocessors and acoustic modems were familiar to the likes of me, but did leave me wondering if all readers could fully appreciate his attention to detail and photographic memories. But what's more important to me than the details was that exciting feeling of knowing I could copy, modify, or delete something and get away with it. This book brought back not only the memories, but the emotion of that and more. Like many hackers, I've always justified hacking for the thrill of it more than material gain. I could easily relate to the adrenaline rush that Kevin experienced and shared throughout the book, and I suspect most readers would feel the same, even if they've never pranked or hacked anyone. After all, we all like to buck the system from time to time. The story has all the elements of great spy novels. With the FBI hunting him down from a young age, Mitnick had no choice but to go on the defensive by using scanners and his own software to alert him when agent cell phones were nearby. Sometimes he made a quick escape, but sometimes he wasn't quick enough. It's important to note that while Kevin was eventually arrested and imprisoned for computer and wire fraud crimes, his story isn't designed to sensationalize or sympathize with criminal hackers. In fact, Mitnick denies monetary or malicious motivations that tend to fill the cyber headlines these days. When he came across the data such as credit card numbers, he would ignore them and move on to the more fun stuff. Kevin's sometimes large ego can distract from his story, but it's understandable considering his title as the world's most wanted hacker. As you get to know Kevin and his antics, his pretense of con man, liar, scammer, and of course, hacker, fall by the wayside, allowing the book to reveal the man and his passion for social engineering as an art form more than a means to an end. That passion follows Kevin to this day in his work as a white hack cybersecurity expert educating others on how to stay safe. And who knows, Kevin could now be keeping us safe from the likes of hackers who are looking for more than thrills. I highly recommend this book and give it five out of five stars.